Well, Danny, plenty to talk with you about. First of all, how happy are you to have signed your new contract with the club? Yeah, Nicky and I are absolutely delighted. It's been one of the greatest privileges of our life to, to work at this football club. Um, initially, just for a short time, but, but we're delighted to, to be able to extend our contracts. It's our ambition to, to try to create a team that the people of Portsmouth could be proud of. And, you know, since we've been here, I think there's a lot of people that, that, that are associated with this club that li like to look back and... I completely understand why, but for us, the, the, the aim is to try to, to create something that, that, that everybody can look forward to, um, and that's certainly what we aim to do. As you mentioned there, you had those 12 games, but was it always part of the plan to, to be here long term? Was that always what you were walk, working towards? Well, that was our plan, for sure. It was kind of a prolonged interview, if you like, um, and hopefully people saw the, our work ethic um, and, and our and our desire to, to want to be here. I think from, from day one, really, we were able to make some really good connections with the people inside the club. You know, Mark Catlin, just, just the very best CEO that we've ever worked with. Um, um, the, the owners and, and, and Michael, the chairman, just, just brilliant people with, with, with absolutely the club's best interests at heart. And then obviously the supporters, I, we kind of felt that we would be able to create connection with the supporters because Ultimately, we have a lot in common because because we we all love football, and I think for for the Portsmouth supporters, just the, the most passionate in the in the country, and the first thing they think about when they wake up is is football, and the last thing they think about before they go to bed is football, and we're we're very similar. You mentioned Mark just now. That's of course the other big news. How sad are you to see him departing as chief exec? Yeah, well, Mark's been brilliant with us from from day one. Um, just incredibly supportive, has a unique relationship with, with the people of Portsmouth, the supporters in particular, but also everybody associated with the club. I think everybody that works with Mark is touched by, by his, his generosity and the support that, that, that he gives. Um, and certainly this football club is a much better place for, for Mark Catlin. So he's a, he's a huge loss. He, he's without doubt the best CEO that, that we've worked with in our, in our time in football. Um, and we, obviously, when we f heard the news, were, were naturally disappointed. Um, but Mark feels that it's the right time. And Mark, every decision Mark has made um, since he's been at this club has been with the club's very, very best interests at heart. And even with this decision, I, I get the impression that he's making it with the club's best interests at heart. And he, he's obviously... Um, it, been in a position to appoint a new CEO. Um, we spoke with, with Andy Cullen on, on Friday. People only speak speak well of well of Andy, and you know the role of CEO at any club or, or any organisation is not always a popular role because you're having to make tough decisions. You're having to lead and manage people, um, but everyone speaks incredibly well of him, um, both as a, as a person as and as a professional. We had a, Nicky and I had a really good hour with him on, on Friday evening. Um, I think we've got lunch with him on Wednesday and then more meetings with him on Thursday. So it'd be a great opportunity for us just to get together and um, get aligned in our thinking um, and then work to, together to, to, to move this football club forward. It certainly feels like you like being around people who kind of match the, the positivity and, and the ambition that you do. Is that something that you, you've seen in those initial discussions with our, with our new man? Absolutely, you know, for for you know everything that Andy and I spoke about on Friday um, evening was about Portsmouth Football Club, and you know, I think we're going to be aligned in the fact that we have the club's very best interests at heart. Every decision we make, and sometimes in the roles that we're in, you have to make tough decisions. Sometimes you have to make unpopular decisions, but hopefully the people of Portsmouth will know um, that they always come from a good place, and they always come with. With, with the best interests of this club at heart. And um, yeah, as I say, we're, we're really looking forward to working with him. There's been a lot of change in a very short period of time at this football club and it very much feels like new beginnings. And like I said previously, no more looking back now for Portsmouth Football Club. You know, we're going to try to create something that's really exciting that people can look forward to. And we want people now to see this as a new Portsmouth and we know and understand what the project is in front of us. 
we see the challenges that we face, but we look forward to, to, to facing those challenges head on, finding the right answers and the right solutions and, and moving this, this great football club forward. Speaking of the new Portsmouth then, and also speaking of tough decisions, last week we saw the retained uh, list released. How does that process go? Do you sort of meet with the players and, and sort of you know, give them an hour or two of your time just to make sure that they kind of understand the decisions that are being made? Yeah, I think so for, for, for Nicky and I off the back of the season finishing and then having the conversation with Mark and, and Michael and, 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 and the other directors and being offered the job, it was an opportunity for us then to go away, to spend 48 hours putting together a report, which is just a report of the football operation, a report of the playing squad, um, a report of the, 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 the football department staff. Um, to speak around the environment and the culture and to, to speak around where we thought the club was at, what we would like, where we thought the vision for the club was and that's very much in line with, with, with what the, the, the club already think. Um, and from that, it was just to give our observations and our recommendations moving forward and, and certainly you know, we're respectful that we've only been here just, just 50 days um, so very much the, 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 the review, if you like, was from, from our early observations and our first impressions. But that was you know, well received and off the back of that we were able to meet the players on Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. I think 30 players, so we had 31 hour meetings with them and it's just a good opportunity really to, to have clear conversations. I think we've, for anyone you're always looking to give them clarity. And whether it's good news or bad news, it's to, to speak to them honestly, to give them your reasons, to explain the whys, to hopefully provide them with an understanding so that everybody can move forward. And, and that's what we've, we've, we've looked to do. Um, you know, these conversations are never easy, but they, they are necessary. Um, and, you know, ultimately it's only our truth as a football club. We have to make decisions in line with the... the uh, our current situation as a club. Um, if you work out where you're currently at, if you work out where you want to get to, then once you get the start point and the destination, uh, the stepping stones that you have to put in place to get to that destination become that much clearer. And, and ultimately, they're the decision. You know, that, that's been how we've made, how we've come to the decisions. And then once you've come to the decisions, like I said, it's just about communicating them. Still a bit of work to be done as well. How are negotiations going with the players that you're still in discussions with? Yeah, they're going well. Again, just really open communication. Obviously, the world is very different. We have to all respect this post-COVID. We've just come out of a pandemic. Um, as a football club, you have to credit Michael and the, and, and, and the family and the, and the board of directors because... You know, we've had no finance, no income since March 2019. Um, you can only imagine the effect that that has on, on any organisation and any business. And, the, you know, Michael and, and the family have, have, have supported the club through this, this really difficult period. Um, and as a football club, we are debt free because of their financial support and we must recognise this. It's not, this situation has not been easy for any football club, um, particularly one which, which relies on, on 18,000 people at Fratton Park every other week. So, so we're, we're totally appreciative and, and respectful of that. Um, there's a lot of clubs that are, that are in, a, in, in, in really difficult financial situations and we must remember how lucky we are to have the support that we do here. Um, I think we all realise that the market value for players is different today than it would have been two summers ago. Um, and what we need to make sure that we do with the finance that we have available and the budget that we have available, that we make the very, very best use of it to get the very, very best players and the very, very best team that can play for, for, for this great football club and certainly Nicky and I are clear on, on the type of characters that we want that fit in with the culture and environment that we, we want to create. We have a clear idea of how we want the game to be played and then it's about trying to recruit the players to fit that game model. We have some really good players at this club, some players that are out of contract that we would 
if possible, like to be able to, 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 to re-engage with. But we also understand that sometimes there are other factors that, come, that, that, that are involved in any decision-making process. And with, with any um, situation like this, there's always two parties. There's always the club and, uh, and the player. And if we can come up with an agreement that works for, for, for everybody, then, then obviously we will be able to, to, to re-engage and, 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 and we'll see them in the, in the blue of Portsmouth come, come pre-season and obviously come the start of the season in August. Do you have a number in your head at all in regards to how many additions you want to bring in? I'm, I'm sure you and Nicky will want to put your stamp on the squad and, and make it that new Portsmouth that you talk about. Yeah, absolutely. We like to have competition for, for places in all positions. Um, we like to be lean and mean. So I don't like to, have, I, you know, I like to have two players in each position. That's what, 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 what we would like in an ideal world. Um, you know, when you look at the top end of the pitch, sometimes you want a different profile of players um, in, in, in that area. But certainly in all, all the other areas, it's, it's, it's competition for places. I don't like it when you start to have three or four left backs or because then all of a sudden it, you know, they are, it, it makes it very difficult for that third choice or that fourth choice le left back to be able to see a pathway into, into the team. So you want competition, you want strong competition because we believe that that's what drives standards. But no, it's to try to create um, a squad that can play in the way that we know the Portsmouth people want the game to be played. Um, first and foremost, it's always about winning. Um, and we want to try to create a winning mentality. So if we can create a... A, a squad with winning mentality that can play towards the, the game model, then, then we believe that we can have success next season. How far ahead in your head do you plan? Are you already looking at kind of pre-season and back to training, friendlies, etc., or is that a, a little way off yet? Yeah, I think for us, um, the process is always to review the season, to take learning from the season, then to communicate that, that, that review um, with with the players and with the staff. Um, we were able to talk with the players last week. This week we're speaking to the staff. It's now then to put into place what the closed season looks like because everybody thinks that the players um, have this wonderful sort of eight week holiday. It's not quite like that. They, um, they, will, have, they will all have off season programmes um, that they need, to, they need to fulfill. So they will have some rest and recoup recuperation, which is very important. Um, for them physically and mentally. Um, they will then start in what is a pre-pre-season programme and that's bespoke training programmes that hopefully will develop their physical condition so that when they come back on the 28th of June, they're, they're ready to hit the ground running. Um, pre-season already for us um, is organised. We've, we've managed to organise all, all of our fixtures. We've got a really good schedule of games which hopefully will be announced in due course. But we like a tough pre-season. We, we like to get the treadmill turning really, really quickly so that almost by the time we get to the start of the season at the beginning of August, then our first league game, the players almost f find it easy. And um, that's certainly what, the, what, what our aim is. Um, but it's a brilliant period for us. We love pre-season because it gives us time on the grass. It allows us to, to be able to spend time with the players to implement our ideas. To, to create the partnerships and the relationships within the team um, and, to, and to, to really develop the players' understanding of how we want to play. So, so we're, 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 we're naturally looking forward to that, that opportunity. Um, and in the meantime, like I said, a lot of planning needs to be put in place to, to make sure that we get to, a, get to a position where, as a football club, we can create a high-performing environment. That is what we have to do. It has to be a high-performing environment. We know the difference between success and failure is, is small um, and we have to get on the right side of the marginal gains. Um, and to do that, we have to be really well prepared. We have to make sure that we get the right people in the right positions to be able to, de to, to deliver the, 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 the programme that, that we need to and the players need if, if we're all going to be successful. Naturally, once you get through that preparation and that pre-season, the first league game, it always comes around quicker than you think it will. And for you, that means you're edging closer to being able to finally experience that Fratton Park crowd as well. 
Well, this is it. I think we're counting down now. Saturday the 7th of August, which is the first game of the season. Um, we're hoping that we get a home fixture and we're just hoping that the people of Portsmouth can be, can be with us to enjoy it. You know, the, the moment Mark gave us the, the nod and, and said that they, the, the club were going to extend the contracts, um, you know, our only thoughts were that we, we were going to be able to experience a, a, a sold out Fratton Park. And let's be honest, we've We've massively missed the supporters. This football club has missed their supporters more than probably any other football club at this level. Um, we know the, the difference that they can make to, to, to this club and, and, and actually to this team um, and to the team that we're, we're in the process of creating. So um, they, you know, the people of Portsmouth know their role. They know how important they are to, to, to us and to, and, and to achieving the success that, that everybody really associated with the club wants. And what we have to do now, um, new beginnings, look forward, work together to create a Portsmouth football club that we can all be proud to be associated with. Always a pleasure to talk to you, Danny, especially at such an exciting time. Thanks. Pleasure. Thanks, boys.